right. Welcome everybody. Carl, can you hear me? All right, cool. Thank you. All right. Um, welcome to uh, the next edition of Frame Your Future Digital. We're really excited about today. Um, a lot of you know Lifesaver. A lot of you probably know Steve, but um, you know we're excited they want to participate and share some information about point of sale systems, um, how their systems can help you all operate a more efficient and effective business. So we're excited about that. I got a couple of things we'll uh, update on first. Um, obviously, there's some lots of changes going on in the last week or so across the country, and uh, we're doing our best to navigate through and start trying to open back up. For those of you who've been on our website or looked at social media, you've seen where we've uh, uh, said we're having an opening planning process. Well, I literally just got off the, the call where we're doing that. Um, and so give you a little sneak preview of what's going to happen. We have, um, we're going to start the capability of shipping boxes out of Chicago initially. So the first thing we're going to be able to do is for people who have the need of boxes of molding, we're going to be able to ship those out of Chicago here in the next day or two. And, um, at this point, if you want those, you'll have to charge freight. We'll have to charge you freight um, to do it, but we'll at least be able to get some product flowing. Um, and then as markets start opening up and we identify what the retail activity is and all the different marketplaces, uh, you know, Texas and Colorado, uh, Georgia, all their states have enacted some sort of the stay at home uh, policies have been either lifted or modified. So we're gonna need some feedback from you all as we kind of navigate through the next week or so about how you're functioning in that environment um, and uh, how we can best serve you from Chicago to begin with. And then again, as those marketplaces that are allowing people to go back to work, uh, like our Houston branch or the Atlanta branch or potentially the Denver branch, as we're able to bring those back on board, uh, we can start bringing our team members back into those branches we're going to have to go slow because we know volume is not going to be where it was back in March. And so it'll be a, it'll be an iterative process of trying to get open and we're just going to keep kind of plodding along. We'll use the website as our primary uh, permanent source of information. Danielle will continue to update the um, social media as we have specific updates. Um, but just know that we're going to start the process this week with some things we've identified. We have some large commercial customers that are requiring lots of boxes. We're gonna bring some team members back, get that product flowing out the back door and to them. Uh, and then we'll start getting, moving down the road. So Larson Jewel is coming back and in, in online into business. Um, I think it'll easily be a month or two before we're back to where we're delivering to you every week kind of thing. I think it's gonna be a while till we get there, um, but we wanna start being able to give you some definitive, here's what's available, here's how you can get it. Um, you know, I think chops will be easy to do no matter where you are, if we can cut chops in three or four branches and, and ship them to you, that would be a fairly easy process to do and less expensive than shipping length or um, obviously join. So, so just bear with us, we're gonna to continue to figure out what's going on. Um, I'll be leaning on all of you, doing a lot of uh, phone calls and emails out to learn more about how you're operating um, but just know we're going to do everything we can to uh, be there for you guys so you can, you know, specify our product with confidence and know that it may not be in two days, but you'll know you're going to get it in a week or you're going to get it in 10 days or whatever the time frame is for your particular state. The other limitation we have is we can't just ship anywhere. Uh, there are certain states that don't allow us to ship product in unless you're an essential business. And uh, so in those situations, you would have to let us know that you're essential you're providing essential services to an essential business uh, and then we can work with you on that. So a lot of layers of this. I said last week, um, for better or for worse, we're not looking for loopholes. We're not looking for ways to get around what's going on. Um, we value your all's health and our team members' health and quite honestly, the whole country's health that we're not going to do that. And that may limit us in some ways, but I, I'll feel better about myself in six months or a year doing it that way. And I know the leadership team here does. So that's what's going on relative to COVID. Um, email me um, if you have any questions. You can certainly chat Danielle right now and, and she can give me those questions. I'm not going to deal with one-off questions on this today. I just want to let you know that uh, I'm available. And uh, my email is drose at larsonjewel.com. So if you want to 
have any specific questions, I'll be happy to take those in the email format. Uh, and if we need to get on the phone, we can jump on the phone. So that's that update. Um, Danielle has also started a campaign um, on social media uh, with a hashtag framers together. And like all of us in the industry, we're trying to find ways to kind of identify the good that's going on and also try to identify things that we're all trying to do to move forward. Uh, so I asked you to, you know, take a look at what you're doing, uh, success stories in your community, uh, some of your customers that are doing amazing things. Those are fun to highlight as well. Um, and obviously things you're doing, uh, you know, if you're making PPE for customer or for people in your community, if you're doing uh, fundraising, all those kind of things, we'd love to hear more about that. And Danielle will get those out on our social media um, and uh, get you some uh, well some good recognition that's well deserved uh, and hopefully uh, improve uh, your status and your local communities with that as well. So um, that's going on. So again, take a look, take a look and for those across all social media. Um, and with that, I'm gonna go through the standard drill of how we communicate with each other. Uh, and then I'll get uh, Steve on here to tell you what it is you came here to see today. There it is right there. All right. So again, we're gonna do the chat um, uh, function. Last week we had a couple of people who either didn't have microphones or didn't have them turned on. So Danielle, I'll work with you to make sure that uh, you're aware of your mic function and all that kind of stuff and we'll get you on to ask your question straight to Steve. Um, I'm going to do a framing studio demo um, which will at least be amusing for you. If you're tired of all the memes you're seeing on social media you'll at least get a kick out of watching me do a, a framing studio demo. The intent of it is not to, to train you on how to use framing studio. The intent is really to sh show you where it is, what it is, uh, kind of the basic function of it, and uh, from there, you all are framers. The part I don't know very well at all is, you know, how to design something a customer would actually want to buy. Um, I can tell you how to merchandise it all day, but in terms of your expertise in design, but I'll attempt to get you to the point where if you can apply your expertise to what I'm showing you, you have a great communication tool with your customers uh, to um, uh, start the process of doing contactless design. And if you haven't used it before, I think it'd be interesting to see what it is. Um, and just know that it's basically the same functionality we've had for a couple of years now. Um, the intent is to invest in it and make it uh, kind of bring it into the 21st century uh, once everything gets back to you know kind of what's next. Uh, but for now, it's a tool of many of our customers using today to help them kind of transact business uh, during this time. So um, I will I will take you through that, and then we'll get to Steve and let him have the balance of the time uh, to. Um, talk to you all about uh, Lifesaver. So again, the chat's two different ways. If you're on a desktop, this is how you get to us. If you got a mobile device, you find the participants tab and then the chat button, and that'll get you into Danielle. Uh, Danielle will uh, try to either compile questions or catch them. And when Steve has a break and his voice, we'll jump in quickly and, and get your questions as, answered in context to where he's at. Um, and we'll go to two o'clock. So that's the normal routine on chat. Um, and that's that. I always forget she put that slide in there. All right. And um, it's official. LJ Marketing at LarsonJewel.com now works. Um, out of all the things going on in the world, I thought the least thing I'd have to worry about is one of our own emails not working. But apparently it's been broken for a while. Um, Danielle and I nailed it down today. It is working. So any kind of feedback about anything really having to do with our our communication with you, the digital frame your futures, even the frame your futures coming down the road, anything that has to do with really marketing, uh, that's the best place to go. Uh, both Danielle and I can see that and uh, we'll, we'll get your questions answered as quick as we can using that email. All right, so now we're gonna go into the adventure of me doing this demo for you. So let me get here and then share this screen. All right, come back to Zoom and share screen and that one. And here it comes. All right. And Steve, it's going to take about five minutes and I'll get out of your way. So uh, thanks for being patient. All right. So um, the this is the public website that everybody can get to. So this is the one your customers can go out to um, and look at our products and things like that. Um, 
but it, it, there's also a spot for you to go. So what I'm going to do is just show you that for your customers, this is where they would go right there. They would go to the framing studio button. They hit that and it'll launch in a framing studio. So that's how your customers would get to this, the same thing for you guys. When you're logged in, hit the correct button. When you log in, here we go. It, it is now under services there. So when you click on services, you'll get to, um, you'll get to framing studio. So from here, it looks the same. Your customers and you see the exact same thing. There's no differences between the two. So let me get your pictures out of the way here. There we go. All right. So uh, from here, the, there, there's, I think Danielle put a slide in here and I apologize, I jumped on right before two o'clock. So I wasn't in the prep meeting before, so I apologize. Uh, I think Danielle has a slide coming up where she goes through some tips. One of the things is you'll see right here, it says maximum file size is three megabytes. Uh, again, when we go to future editions, we'll, we'll have that improve so you can get a higher res image in here. These images are fine for what we're doing. You're not printing on a printer to put on the wall. This is simply to kind of, you know, visualization tool. So just know that your image size is somewhat limited. Again, your customer or you can do this and then you can communicate. We'll show you on the end how to communicate back and forth with each other. So you tell them what, um, what you want to, here's the, the image we're going to use. So I, I clicked on that to get that there. And then you tell them what the width of the artwork is. So whatever you're designing to, you can put that number in and then you say upload. And now you have the image that you're going to work with. From there, uh, this is where your all's expertise will trump mine in a heartbeat. But this is where you can choose mats. Now, one of the things that Framing Studio has, it, it has a color recognition feature in it that's, that, that's patented. So what that does is it only picks matte colors that it identifies as compatible with the piece. Now, this is up to your, your sense of taste and design, whether all these things are that, but at least narrows the field down on the matte board. So from a customer point of view, if your customer's out there doing it, then sending you what they think they like, uh, this at least limits their choices because you know if you start putting every map board that's available in our marketplace out there, it get pretty overwhelming. So that's that's how it helps you kind of narrow down the map function. You have the ability of choosing one mat, two mat, or three mats. Um, we always recommend doing two mats, but for today, for this exercise, I'm going to do one because I don't want to take a bunch of time. So you also can add fillet. So if you want to put a fillet in there, you can click on the one and you can tell it I want to do a fillet. And then it brings all the fillets in that you can pick a fillet to put on there. And um, if you know what you're looking for, you do that. And now the fillet's displayed on there. So you have that in there. And then the mat board, you can now tell it how wide you want the mat board at the top. Uh, just a second. Okay, it wants me to pick a mat board first. Always, always a thing. So let's do that. And then we'll look around here. And I just happen to pick teal blue. And then I can widen that out at the top. I can widen that out on the left. And again, you can do, obviously you'd square it up, but the idea would be you can make this any way that you, any width you want to make it. Um, and obviously so can your customer. So now you have a map board and a fillet in there. Uh, you go to the frame and here you can choose colors. You can choose styles. You can choose widths or if, you have a particular collection you want to show the customer, you can also go by collection and narrow the field that way. So um, I'm gonna pick Carnival and then view your frame choices. Um, so now I have all the Carnival sitting there. I can pick the color that I think will work best with that and it puts it right on there. So now you have that. Finally, which I think is cool for the customers, they can add the wall color that's going on. Now we have a Benjamin Moore tab. So if they have Benjamin Moore, uh, color codes, they can actually find the exact color that's on their wall. Uh, if they don't, there's more of a generic vibrant colors and muted colors kind of thing. But one way or the other, you can choose what your walls look like. Everybody's got gray walls, so we'll pick a gray wall. That's a beige wall, that's close enough. And so now you've basically configured uh, the customer's um, artwork. And from there, once you've done all that, you have three choices down here. You can email it to somebody 
What I would tell you here, if you're emailing it to your customers, I would email it to yourself first, because right now uh, there's some language on the email that is older. Uh, it's back when we had artisans and some other things and you could have a lot of choices in terms of uh, images. That library doesn't exist anymore, but we've not updated that language. We will when we update, but we don't. So I would recommend if you're using this as an email communication, definitely email it to yourself, put your own personalized message in there and then email it to your customer. And your customer can also email it to you. So if they've done this work and want to email it back, they can do that. You can print it if you like, and then you can also save it as a file. So you have those three choices. We'll do email and I'm going to send it to Danielle. And let them know it was me that did it. Oh, you got to spell right. And then send. All right. So now Danielle's going to email, have this image on it with all the details, the recipe over there on the side. And if she's you and I'm the customer, now she can go in and, and start either working on it or make some changes based on your expertise and send it back. So that's how Framing Studio can help you communicate with your customers today uh, and do some, some uh, contactless design. Um, one more thing before I let, you let uh, Steve take over. Um, you've seen some activity with our where to buy function here just recently. That is coming back. You're going to, you're going to be involved in the coming back here in the next week or two. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to ask you to go in and fill out all your information because we have about 18 different addresses and phone numbers and hours. We have all this different information. We don't know what's right anymore. And so we're going to send it to you all or ask you to come online and put in your information. So once you've done that, then you'll be live on the system and you're, you'll, you'll be able to be found by your customers or new customers who don't know about you based on your location. So you'll have that opportunity here in the next couple of weeks to do that. And then this tool, as you can see, is a much better find, find a framer tool. It's got the Google map, it's got all your information. We'll have hours out there. Any of your social or your webpage, we'll link them to all your social media. So this is gonna be a great, great tool. And it's going to let them find you in a bunch of different ways. So uh, you'll see notification of that. We'll send emails. We'll also put it on the website. When you log into the website, it'll, it'll notify you that you need to update your information. A lot of different ways to get this information in. And then this will go live. Once we have you know, enough to make this thing functional across the country, we'll go ahead and shoot this thing live sometime in the month of May. And then that'll be a great way for people to find us. So that's going to come live again. And I'm really excited about that. And then and hopefully you guys are too. So, but again, we're asking you to put the information in because we know you know more than we do about how you operate your business. All right, with that, I'm gonna stop sharing. And um, thank you for enduring that. Um, again, if you have questions about Framing Studio, you can send them to me for sure, but send them at ljmarketing uh, at largeandjewel.com and Danielle can distribute it to some of the people internally that know a little bit more than I do about it. Um, and then again, Obviously, when your reps start coming back, uh, they're the ones that use it a lot and know it and can help you more in the detail of it. But we're gonna, we're gonna help you out as, right now as best we can. But I think once you get on it, you'll figure out exactly what it can and can't do and how it might be able to help you. All right, with that, um, Steve Smeltz, I've been with him a few times and um, here's what I know. Every time he does a presentation, our agenda gets all messed up because everybody has questions for him, everybody wants to hear from him. Uh, and he really knows his stuff. He's, he's one of you and uh, crossed the line and came over to the software side. And, and so we were excited when they agreed to come over here and, and work with you guys today. So I'm going to turn it over to Steve and let him take you through his presentation. And um, Steve, it's all yours. Thanks. Thanks, Dave. I, I appreciate it for uh, the invite and uh, letting me be a part of this. Um, we all need to be able to do what, you know, a little more for everybody, uh, help out each other especially these times, right? So uh, I'm more than uh, willing to do whatever we need to do to help um, our framing community. And I, I appreciate the, uh, the invite to let me talk to all the folks. So thank you. Thank you very much, Dave, Daniel. All right, so just a little bit of background. Um, Steve Smeltz, I've been uh, one of the principals of Lifesaver for, oh, I don't know, 25 years or so. Uh, prior to that, um, I, was, I had a frame shop in Atlanta. And um, I came from a computer background. So when I 
bought my first frame shop here in, in Atlanta, Georgia, I wasn't really thrilled about the products that we had on the marketplace to run my business. And really this, what this, this whole thing started as, a lot of it has started as, is how do we efficiently run our company to make a profit, right? I was an artist, I have, I'm creative, I'm all those things, but at the end of the day, I still wanna make money, right? I gotta put food on my table and I gotta make money for, for my family. So when I first bought the shop, there was really no tools out there that I felt was uh, compatible with what I wanted to do. So um, what I'd like to share today are some stories about that and some uh, product knowledge about our services and software services that we have for you. I would imagine some, if not a lot, um, are already Lifesaver customers. So what we're gonna go over today is the cloud version of Lifesaver. And this is really kind of goes with what's going on in the country, right? So we've had a lot of calls over the last month about our current customers wanting to be able to access their software from wherever they're at. Well, if they have the, the legacy version that's been out there a while, then that's kind of difficult to do other than you got to drive to the store, right? So with this product, you, gotta, you have a lot of options to be able to take that store and stick it wherever you're at. I'm, I'm sitting here in my house right now. I can log into my store, run reports, do some designs for folks, send them images of those designs with pricing and interact with those customers um, with no contact, like Dave was saying. So those are the big advantages right now for this product. So we're gonna kind of go over some of those things. And then if you have questions and stuff, just type those out to Danielle and she'll filter those through me. And if I can't get to them today, she can send them over to me and I will either call you or I'll email you um, the answers. If I don't know it, I'll find someone that does. So again, I thank you for your time and uh, let's get started. So right now, can you, if you can see my screen, somebody give me a thumbs up. Everybody good? See my screen? Okay, great. Hey, Johnny. Um, all right, so when you first log into the product, you come to this page. So what I like to do initially is just to kind of go and click the right orders tab. And I'm not gonna really talk, I'm gonna put a description in. What I'm gonna do is just write an order very quick without kind of explaining anything, just so you can see how fast it is to write these orders, right? So, and then we'll go back and we'll discuss all these different fields. I just wrote an order, what took me, 15 seconds, 20 seconds, right? So the point is that, that you, you don't have to spend a lot of time trying to write the order and get the price. I got the price, it's 430 and five cents. How do you wanna pay for it? So the point being is how easy it is to use. We designed this from the perspective of non-computer users. And we've always had that mentality at Lifesaver Software, even with our initial products. Even, even though we're the, you know, the, the tech folks, we're trying to develop products that makes it easy on the framing community to write their orders, be efficient, be more profitable, understand their margins, keep their margins the same, and not get in the way of you being creative. Okay, so let's back up. So if, if I go back to the home screen, you get to this product through a browser. So meaning if, if you can get to the internet on pretty much any device, you can run your store from anywhere. So a lot of questions come up initially is, what if I don't have the internet? What, what if my internet goes down? It's a store. You use your phone. You can... Uh, hotspot to your phone, Android or whatever you have, Apple, it doesn't matter. So when we're at the trade shows, we run all the, all the software off of one person's cell phone and it works phenomenal. 
So if the internet goes down at your store, you can always just run it on your phone. And I'll show you some other features you can do on your phone that will really help too. Okay, so let's, let's slow it down a little bit and kind of go through first the order process that I just did quickly. So at the, at the very top, that's your description of the customer's artwork that, that came in the door, right? So then I'm gonna type in the size, 22 by 22. I'm gonna go to the molding tab and I'm gonna pick a Larson Jewel molding out of my list. You'll notice, as soon as I start typing product IDs in, right, even shows you the, the uh, description here, if you hover over it, it shows me how many feet I'm gonna need currently, right, shows me the finish size. It automatically starts tabulating the costs on the right here. So you don't have to do anything other than just type in the, the product ID numbers. So I'm gonna type in a, a map board number, and I'm gonna type in another map board number, and it'll give you the descriptions if you hover over it. It automatically fills in the width of the project and you can set these defaults to anything you want. Now, if I go back up to the molding field, you'll notice it adds another molding tab button right there as soon as I add this first one. So if I'm stacking something, and that could be stacking vertical or horizontal, it doesn't matter, you, get, you can pick. So do I wanna go out or do I wanna go up, okay? So now that I got kind of a simple design in there, you'll notice at the bottom, it automatically, especially Larson Joel's great at this, is they send us images of all their product. So when you're using Larson Joel product, you have a huge advantage because you, as you're typing this information in, you're kind of getting a visualization of what that product is gonna look like. And now that, I'd say about six months ago, uh, we took that visualization product and, and buried it in, into the default product of Lifesaver Software Cloud. It's not an add-on, um, it just comes with the product now. So as you're typing those, those item numbers in, you'll get a little preview of what you're selling, okay? Here's some benefits of that. S customer comes in, you know, in the, in the days that I had a frame shop, I would, you know, I'd have a chair and they'd want to stand on the chair and look down at it. I'd have a couple big map boards with holes in it that they could look through trying to, to understand what, it, what it's going to look like. Now, do you need to show the visualization to every customer who walks in the door? Absolutely not. But for the folks who have a, a harder time trying to figure that out, this is a phenomenal tool. And I know it's phenomenal because I know every time that you use visualization, your ticket price, your average ticket goes up. And your, and your rejects, meaning they call or they say never mind or they forget about it or they get home and say forget about it, those go way down. So I can even take the image, the customer walks in the door with a, a piece of art. Now I can take our FrameView app take a picture with my phone, it automatically links whatever picture I just took from my phone into this hole and shows the customer the finished product. Now, how does this, does this become even more useful in today's crazy world we're in? I can save that, I can create um, a montage of different framing options for customers and email that to them with the prices so that they can interact with you, the designer, and create uh, some wonderful custom framing without even being in front of them. So that, that, that's kind of a, a, a real world scenario as of today, right? So when, when I preview this and I show that to the customer and I tell them that that's $430, instead of them going, boy, that's $430, I don't know if I'm going to like it, they know they're going to like it because they can see it. And we know factually that the, the average ticket of these jobs go up because now I, can, now I can say, well, does it look better with a four-inch molding, a four-inch map board or a one-inch map board? You know, like how you're in your store and you have your samples out and you have those customers that keep creeping in the, the, the uh, frame on the mat board 
so that, that they only want a little skinny map board. That's what they're thinking when they come in, right? But you know that that's not going to look very good. So now you can show them, compare them side by side, the one that has the one inch map board and the one that has the four inch map board. All right, so I can go over here and click compare, right? And then I'll move that one over there. And I'm going to go ahead and say one. And now I can show them the differences, All right? So do I want that? Or do I want something like that? Where it visualizes, it brings your eye into the artwork. You're not so focused on a bunch of stripes there with the mat and the moldings so close together. Another great feature here is that, that when, you, when you do the suggestion, there's a, a built-in part of the software that allows you to do suggestions. So say you have, a, we get back to normal, you got some new employees at the store and you want, you're not 100% sure of their designing skills. You can create suggested packages that you, you create that once that customer comes in, you could take their artwork and automatically stick them into predefined custom uh, uh, treatments. And then th the designer can modify it from there, but at least you give them some uh, little stepping stones to create something phenomenal. That, that you love and the customer will love. So th that new employee is not starting from scratch, right? So let's back up a little bit and let's talk about, we created this design. Now, it, at the bottom where the mats are here, you have these glazing choices. And then another thing to piggyback on if you have a new design person, you have these little helpful hints on why you would, why you would use said product right so if they're not versed on the glazing part of the framing yet they don't have it down pat they can just hover over and see bullet points on why they would use that particular type of glazing so it helps with your training it helps you upsell product because the more knowledge that we give our associates the more knowledge that they can supply to the end customer and then that customer walks out there with a product that's gonna last them a lifetime. So below the glazing is basically, look at it as um, filing cabinets. And you have specials, mounting, stretching, and you can have anything you want here. These can say anything you want. So under specials, I can, I can say, well, I need glass spacers, right? And I can just click on that. And it automatically knows the size, it automatically knows the prices, and it, add, it will add that dollar value to the total. And if I need more than one, I can just change it on the fly and go doubles it up, right? You can even have it so that if you click on it, a secondary message would come up saying, like if you were selling um, uh, security hangers, right? And one of the security hangers and you clicked on it, a pop-up message could say, make sure you sell them the wrench or make sure you give them the wrench or whatever you want to say behind that message, right? So you click on it, it will pop up a secondary message to, to sell something else. Here's another, let me uh, do this here. Let me start here and I'm gonna start a new ticket and we're gonna go back to the same size because that's easy keystrokes and molding let's pick a different one here from larson just showing my age here all right so here's the design we're working on you can also have different templates so the customer comes in and they have i don't know say four baseball cards you can actually overlay the template on top of the uh, artwork. So let's go, let's do this, do 11 by 11 and then two inches. Oops, I don't have a damn darn, it's too big. It told me I made a mistake, which it, it's correct. 
So, all right, so what we're gonna do is what it's complaining about is that the map board is, there's no way that that map board's gonna be able to fit into that, into that template, right? So that's why it's complaining. So we're gonna go ahead and go back here and then fix that. So we're gonna say, uh, the height is five and 11. Now it would work, see, now that, now that would fit, fit that. And now I can change the template to add those pieces of artwork. Now, how do I get that artwork into there? I got a few different options. I showed you here where if you have the app on your phone, you can use the app uh, to upload the pictures, or if you have something that's on your computer, then you can just go to the hard drive onto your computer and upload something. And then that'll take that file from, from your computer and stick it into the, uh, to the artwork. The other thing that you can do is when, that's gonna come in very handy, and if we wanna talk about this here in a little bit, we can, is you also have, when you're a Lifesaver customer, you also have that disability to take that same app and upload to the images to the internet so that the customers can see and play around with those designs that you've created, right? So if you want to open that up to your customers, then that picture would show up into this hole, basically, into this framing, and then your customers can pick what they wanna see into the, uh, into the images and then change the sizes, change the backgrounds. So that's something we could talk about here in a little bit. Um, oops, almost cut, almost cut me off. So let me go ahead and do this here. I'm gonna show you how, how you start from scratch. So let me log off here. If you go to lsscloud.com, this web address up here, and you don't even have to have that login part. You just do lssCloud.com, and you type in. Um, you want to click on the little register button down here, and then fill all this information in. It'll email you uh, your uh, credentials, so then you can log in and play around with the software. It's the full full version. There's no limitations on it, so you can do anything you want to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and log in. All right, so once you register, you're gonna to come to this screen, it's gonna allow you to log in. And then for the most part, all of these buttons down here at the bottom, you're not gonna use other than write orders, payments, maybe invert, uh, invoice search, quotes. But once you have the software set up, a lot of these buttons you really don't ever go into. So after you set up your pricing and your specials and your markups, and your art conditions, your art types, then once that's, that's configured, you don't really have to go in there. So the over, where you're gonna spend most of your time, really, is writing the orders. So when you, when you go into this screen here, all, all of your prices that you've set, and we're, we're here to help you, to, to get that. So once you register, we have an 800 number that you can call us, talk to us, email us, chat with us, whatever we need to do to help you get going. Um, if you're an existing Lifesaver customer and you go from the legacy version to the cloud version, then all your data and information is in there. It, it, you don't have to do anything. You might want to tweak it a little bit after you get it moved over but all that information comes over all your customers all your molding mat boards all your costs uh, anything your inventory comes over so you let us know that you want to go to the cloud we'll get a backup from you we'll take that backup we'll load it into your cloud account you come in the next morning and all that data is there ready for you to go so um. That's a very, very easy transition. Now, a lot of times I get cu uh, cu customers or potential customers saying, well, what about security? Well, as the owner of the store, you can set security rules based on whatever they, you want them to do. 
So as the owner, you want, you want to be able to do everything. Maybe you have a, 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 a GM or a manager running the store. They can do everything except X. And then maybe the folks who are working out front designing pieces, they can only design and write tickets, take payments. Hey, like Steve, that. Steve yep. your yep. screen's not moving. We're, we're stuck on the back on the customer information screen before login. Okay, let me, uh, let me see where we're at. Let me stop to share and reshare. Let's see if this is back. Back? There we go, Vegas framing. Yeah. All right, okay. cool. So let me go back to this, this screen here. So there's where you set the security rules, right? So a lot of customers, since it's in the cloud, they get a little apprehensive of, oh my gosh, it's in the cloud, right? People don't understand what the cloud is or what it isn't. And security, uh, basically the cloud is a, a big hard drive somewhere in a data server that's running this software, right? What, what are the advantages of, of running in the cloud? You, you don't have to buy new hardware all the time. It runs on most devices. You don't have to go out and run a, get a new computer. You could run it on an iPad if you already have an iPad. So those questions about security is, you know, how do I keep my information secure? Well, you're allowed to assign those roles based on what the job function is of those employees, All right? So let's go back here. Now let's go through this one more time. Once you get registered, what, what is our main goal? Or what is my main goal with Lifesaver Software? Obviously, is the more, cus more shops I can keep in business, the better for all of us. So I would love to have more Lifesaver customers, but if you're not running point of sale software, find a product that you like and you like the folks who work there and you feel comfortable with them and you understand their product, go buy it. If you're still doing things by hand, you're losing money every single time you write an order. I'll guarantee it. Anytime someone has a price increase, right? How long does it take you to figure out that that, that price increase the way you're doing it by hand? So say somebody goes up 3%. Well, every time you write an order, you're gonna take 3% and throw it out of your pocket because you didn't update your prices. Every time Larson sends us an update and we get one every week from them, every single week we get an update from Larson and we automatically put it into the cloud product. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to go download anything. You don't have to go search for anything. You don't have to do nada. All you have to do is log into your software and those price increases are automatic. What happens if they add product or delete product? What do you gotta do? You don't have to do anything. All you have to do is log in and it's done. We take care of that for you. How about backing up your system? Don't have to do that anymore either. We automatically take care of that for you. Say you're at the, you know, we go the, the next uh, Larson Joel open house here, hopefully soon, right? And you're there, but you want to see what's going on at the store. Now you can, you just log into your, your product and you can see if Betty Smith picked up that order that owes you $800 or $1,000. You can see how many orders were written. So I'm adamant about if you're not running anything, if you're not using any software, find somebody you like. Hopefully it's us. But if it's not us and it's someone else, you're going to do yourself a great service by using that product. You're going you're gonna to make more money. Your margins are going to be consistent. You're going to offer your customers a better experience. No one, when I had my store in Atlanta, I can't tell you how many times since I was, before we wrote this software, how many times I was standing there in front of a board this long, trying to figure out all the prices. 
And at the end of that five minute experience, while they're standing there looking not very happy because I kept on hitting the plus button and I told them it was $430, did they say, mm, I don't know, can I get a break on that or can I get a discount on that? Well, they asked me because I was in charge of the numbers. I was in charge of the, of the uh, calculator, right? So obviously I can make that change. When you do something like this, they don't question it. $430 is $430. How would you like to pay for it? Visa, MasterCard, American Express, Discover. There's your choices. I'm going to run the whole charge. The 430. And maybe you get a few customers that say, ah, maybe can you do half? Yeah. Maybe some old, you know, your, your existing customers that you've known for a long time, you know, take half. But for the most part, it's definitely uh, behooves you to tell them the price and then go ahead and run the, the full amount. Okay, so how are we doing on time, guys? Okay, awesome. All right, so what happens whenever um, a customer comes in and they were in six months ago? And they want to do that same job. Well, for a lot of stores, it's go get one of your helpers to come out and help the, the customer while they stall them, while you go in the back and start rummaging through a bunch of paperwork and trying to find Betty Smith's old job that she did six months ago. If you automate your store, then you don't have to do that. All you have to do is go in there and find Betty Smith that shows you all her jobs. You pull it back up. And the great thing is when you, when you pull that ticket up and you create a new ticket out of that, it prices it in today's dollars. Meaning if you had a price increase of a couple percent here or there, it automatically knows that and, in, and prices it accordingly. Well, that's up to you whether you want to take that money off of there or not. I would say no. I go to get a loaf of bread and it's three cents more tomorrow than it is yesterday, then I still got to pay the three cents. Right. So the overall, a lot of what I hear at trade shows and open houses is a lot is that I don't want to lose that experience with my customers, that one on one. You're not going to lose that experience with your customers, that one on one, just because you're typing into the keyboard. I think the customers will hugely appreciate the effort of you automating keeping their records, making sure that if they do come in from six months from now, that you can get them in and out of the door quickly, right? We wanna show them an experience that's, that's easy and quick and not old school. I think, that, I think they would appreciate that. So automating your store will definitely increase your, your, your profitability, the ease of use of it, you won't be spending time repricing your boards or repricing anything. We take care of that. All right, so if, if a customer comes in the door, right, and we're gonna do an order, and we're gonna do 22 by 22, we're gonna pick a Larson molding here, let's see. this one okay and then we're gonna put a map board in here uh, what happens okay now that they want to uh, to buy that piece right so once let me go ahead and put a description here once once we say hey they want that item we're gonna select a customer Let's see if I have somebody in here Roger I'm gonna select them Okay, and when I hit save, it automatically asks you if you want it to be a live real ticket, an invoice, or a quote. So customer walks in, they want a quote from you, you hit a quote. Now, whenever it saves that as a quote, you can print that quote out for them that they can leave with. You can email the quote to them. You can do both, it doesn't matter. 
But the point being is now they have a quote in their hand. It doesn't show them the breakdown of all the prices. It shows them the total at the bottom. And now they come back a week from now and they said, hey, I was in last week. I want to do that job we were talking about. You don't have to jump through a bunch of hoops. All you have to do is click on the quote, find that quote, open it back up. You're ready to go to sell it. So there's the, the, time, the, the time that would take to rewrite the quote. And if it was anything like my old store, someone could come in in the morning before we wrote all this software, someone could come in in the morning and get a quote for a piece that was um, say um, $2.99. And then they came in the afternoon and, and another employee of mine worked up that quote might be $2.89. Because when, we, when you're doing it by hand, if it's say the size was 16 and a quarter by 20, well, maybe your employee says, well, heck, I'm close enough to 16 by 20. Let's just use the 16 by 20 column. Well, I don't have a glass stretcher. So I had to fork out the money to uh, cut that 16 and a half by 20 out of the next size up, right? So when you use a product like this, you're not gonna find that, that your employees are looking at the wrong column. So you charge the amount of money that you should be charging, not the amount of money that your, maybe your, uh, your salesperson is, is writing up the order. They're using the right prices, not, mm, I'll just go ahead and give it to you for the 16 by 20 price. You can't do that anymore. Here's another great, feature that allows you to be more productive, uh, to, to allow yourself more time to do the things that you need to do. Uh, you know, going out there and trying to sell your business, the social media aspect of the, that we all have to embrace to get more customers. You don't want to be in front of the, the, your computer if you don't have to be. What, what we're trying to create is a product that allows you to do everything easy and get away from it so you can go market your, yourself in your store. So what happens when you write those orders? We automatically start creating production logs for what, what you do next. You know, the framing industry is unique really because we have a retail store that we're selling something to consumers, but just a few feet away, we have a production facility in the back that we then have to be production managers and logistics folks and inventory folks. So we're really running two separate entities. If you use a product, a point of sale product, that makes your life easier in the front, keeps your margins the same, creates a profit for you, you want that same product to be able to be profitable on the production side or in the back, back side of the, the uh, facility. So what Lifesaver does, it then creates workflows and productions for you to keep up with that work. So you can go in on Monday morning, create a production log and say, here's everything I got to do uh, by next, by this Thursday. Okay. And then once you have those, once you write those tickets, it automatically starts creating those production logs for you. So here's some tickets that I sold. And then these headings at the top can be the different steps in the production. And they can be anything you want, but for now I have the mats cut, uh, it's verified, everything looks good. Um, now it's on the truck, it's being delivered, but it could be sold, uh, verified, assembled, it doesn't matter. But the point being is you can then start taking these jobs and moving them into different types, different uh, buckets into the production schedule and then get reports on that information and keep up with it. You could keep up with it from home or on vacation or, or a trade show or whatever. That's the great thing about being on a cloud product is that you're in front of that product at any time you want. If you don't want to be, you don't have to be obviously, but if you need to get that data, that data is sitting at your fingertips. So now I have this in production and I can start moving those. And now I can get reports based on those headings. 
So we try to give you tools that will run the production side of your business as well as the margin profit side uh, by collect by bringing in the money. Okay, the the information that's in Lifesaver is secure, meaning it's encrypted, meaning if if by any it's never going to happen. But let's say never's the strong word. Say it did happen that someone hacked into our facility, which it's not a lifesaver facility. It's a co-location facility in Atlanta or Alpharetta, Georgia. It's extremely secure. That's all they do. It's one of the top rated facilities in, in, in Atlanta. All that data is sitting there. What happens if that facility went offline for some reason? We have another facility in a different part of the country that automatically takes that information and turns it on on that facility so you are not going to uh, be out with that information right so something happened to it in atlanta that data is backed up every hour to another facility outside of the state of georgia so that information is always there that information is sitting on those servers encrypted so they're not even they wouldn't even be able to open it if if they wanted to so all the credit card information because this i get this question a lot too at the, these open houses what about credit card information because we run credit cards through lifesaver well in the old days you would have the old swiper you'd swipe a little you'd have a little you know uh mag tech swiper and you'd swipe that card basically that mag tech swiper was just a keyboard really and when you swiped it, it took all those numbers and digits and passed them through the internet or over the phone line, however it went, went. And that was unencrypted. Nowadays, Lifesaver uses the technology that you don't have to worry about your credit cards being hacked. We have the highest level security in this in, for running a cloud-based product. Everything is tokenized, meaning those numbers never appear anywhere. So it's, it's encrypted on our end and it's encrypted on the other end and in between it's all just a bunch of nothing. So when you have your credit cards running through us, A, you'll get a better rate, a lower rate because they know that the risk is less by using a tokenized uh, product like Lifesaver. We want to do everything we can to keep our stores and all stores really, uh, whether you're a customer of ours or not, we want to keep this industry as strong as we can. This is, this is all I know. This is all I've done for 30 years. So I look forward to questions. I look forward to comments. Um, you can always reach me outside of this, uh, this realm through the Lifesaver support team. Great. Um, can you hear me? So how are we looking on time, Dave? Okay. All right. So do we have, do we want to do any kind of uh, questions or anything? Do we want to do anything like that? Or you want to reach out to me after, after the class? Hi, Steve. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yep, I can now. Okay. Sorry about that. I don't know what was going on with my audio. So I do have a couple of questions from um, customers if you wanted to uh, answer a couple now, and then I can email you the ones that we don't get to. Oops, now you're muted. Hold on. Okay. Um, okay, there we go. Okay, awesome. So first I'm going to... First I'm going to unmute Marto110 to answer his question. Okay. Marto, you should be good. Steve? Hi. Hey, I, my question is, I'm a long-standing Lifesaver customer. I have the old app, okay. and I want to upgrade to the new. I mean, I've already paid. You know, how much more is it going to cost me to upgrade to cloud? Okay. Um, here's what I'm going to do. Uh, 
I appreciate LJ's time for me to do this. And I know we're in a really kind of weird place. Everybody's with all this stuff that's going on. Um, let me go through what it would normally be. And I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna do. If you, if you were a new customer coming to the cloud to start, it's $895 plus $50 a month, right? If you're coming from existing product, it's $595 and $50 a month. I'll tell you what, if you're coming from the existing store, and this is for whoever's online, so when you call us and say, I want this deal, you got to say, hey, I, I, was, I heard Steve on the, on the broadcast at the LJ broadcast today. I'll do it for 99 bucks for an existing customer. And I'll do it for $199 for anybody that wants to move. But that's between us and how, how many people are on this call. I, know if there's, I don't know if there's 50 people on the call or 10 people or 100 people. I don't know. But it's something that I can do to help us get ready for when the stores open, get, you know, uh, I'm passionate about this industry. I have been for forever. Uh, I want to be able to help. And that's a small token that I can, that I can do to help my fellow business folks to, to put themselves in a better position and better manage their business by using this product. So um, in your, in your circumstance, if you're an existing customer, 99 bucks. Thanks, Steve. That's, I mean, that's, a, I mean, I don't know, I'm not a mathematician, but that's, I don't know what the percentage off is, but it's big. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Thanks. Um, next, I'm going to go to Philip Nichols to ask a question. Um, Philip, you should be unmuted now. Hey, Philip. What's name? Unmute. Did he write it down? Did he send it to you? I could answer. Yeah, I'm hitting unmute, but for some reason it's just not. Um, I think when you hit unmute, they have to say okay sometimes. Oh, okay. I don't know why that is. Um, Philip Nichols, if you're out there. Oh, oh there we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just just curious. Um, I use ProSelect. I'm a photographer as well, but I use ProSelect um, for my in-person sales. Uh -huh. And I am able to show my frames around uh, those pictures um through that particular software is this integratable um no we don't integrate with pro select um since we do um you know the point of sale the inventory the visualization part of it uh, mm -hmm. the only real true integrations that we have are with our credit card processing company if you run credit cards you can run them through lifesaver uh freeing you up not not to to do two sets of books um the other integrations would be to Mac cutters, but to other software vendors that are kind of in, in our same industry, um, no. Okay, well, and just for a point of clarification, they're not necessarily in your same industry. Um, they, and they don't um, do point of sale stuff, it's just for in-person sales type displays. Uh, like if you go to a store, like to their <laughs> venue or wherever, you can write up an order and show them what it's going to look like and say it's two ninety nine. Correct. Okay, um, that that's kind of the same product that I sell. Well, it their their software and just not to belabor it, but their software takes it one step further. I can actually import the rooms uh, from the individuals' houses and show that on the walls as well. Yeah. Um, if if you. Um, Let's do this. If you, um, let's go to, you can still see my screen. Mm -hmm. This product here that we're getting ready to launch, which allows you or really your consumer to go in there and uh, visualize the product with, with their artwork. These little vignettes that we're creating, the, we're close to having the ability um, to uh, virtually reality show that image on their wall, right? So, so augmented reality would be the proper term. So basically you take an iPad, you take a picture of the art, you could frame it, then hold it up 
um, in their living room and you could see through it so that you, they get that image onto the iPad it could show them what it's going to look like. That's kind of what you're looking for, right? Uh, no. <laughs> 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 so when you, when you get a chance when we're offline, if you want to go to um, ProSelect and just take a peek at their, okay. at their software, and okay. you'll, see, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. But I appreciate it. Okay. I'll take a look. And if you want to reach out to me, um, you know, um, feel free to, please. Absolutely. Okay, great. I'm going to um, open up one more question, and then I'm going to send the rest to you, Steve, so you can answer them um, later. And while everyone's listening, if, any, if everyone could just send me their email in the chat so that we are able to contact you after this and answer your questions. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, so the next uh, customer, let's see, Chris Rajik. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. If you'd like to ask your question. Uh, yeah, Steve, I've been a customer of Lifesaver since 2000. Thank um, you. And you yeah. had mentioned lsscloud.com. If we go there, um, can we take a look at the cloud version and play around in there and explore that? Oh, yeah. Um, so if you go to lsscloud.com, and you click the register button, that'll give you 30 days of full access to everything that's in there. Okay. And then since you're an existing customer, all that data from your store, uh, when you say, okay, hey, I want to switch, we'll move all that over for you. Okay. And Thank so you. You, you leave one day running the legacy version, you go into the store the next morning, and you, you log into the cloud, and all your stuff is there. And then, you know, like, like as always, 800 number to when you have a question and we know you're going to have lots of questions. You just, you know, you call us and then eventually all the light bulbs go off and we don't hear from you. You know that you, with the old product, you know, you probably called a lot of it initially, but then, then it all kind of sank in and went, okay, fine. I got it. So we are here to help uh, in any way we can. That's for sure. Okay, great. Well, thank you, Steve. Thank you for your time. Um, I'm going to turn it back over to Dave to close us out. We really appreciate it. Thank you so oh, much. I appreciate guys. I appreciate all the effort that LJ does for our industry too. Thanks, guys. All right, Steve, thanks a lot. And like I say, he, he's always an agenda buster because there's so much good information and people want to know more. So thank you for doing it. Thanks for your time. And uh, thanks for the people that are still on. Next week, we're going to revisit the uh, research material that I did two weeks ago. We're gonna finish that presentation as well as drill into some different marketplaces and talk a little bit more specifically about some regions of the country and some of the differences. So that'll just be a continuation of what we did two weeks ago. I'd uh, love to have you all back for that and uh, tell your friends and neighbors to jump on board as well. We, we love uh, educating everybody we can. Uh, stay tuned, we're gonna to continue to give you guys updates on what we're doing. We're gonna get back in business with you guys as soon as we can. Appreciate it, make it a great week. Take care.